previously on No Limits Live. Well, we're about to board. I'll see you when we get to Denver. And now we were headed off to a women's luncheon where our own, very own Ann Lewis, president of No Limits, is going to be the keynote speaker. So we're excited and we're off. We are at the home of George and Nancy Casey, two extraordinarily, extraordinarily wonderful No Limit supporters. Uh, George is also the interim president and CEO of the Humane Association. So this is going to be spectacular. We thought there might be 20, 30 people coming. Um, we understand that there are many as 70 or 80 people who are going to be here this evening. So it's going to be a great evening for No Limits. And uh, we'll see you soon. that with our ingenuity, creativity, and innovative spirit, there are no limits to what is possible in America. Glad to have no limits on American Humane here at our house this evening. Because every issue I have ever cared about in my lifetime, whether it's childhood violence, child labor, rape is a crime of war, access to health care, equal pay for equal work, lesbian and gay and transsexual issues, Anne has not only been in the movement, she's led it and she's helped craft the legislation at home that makes the world the America we want to be. So, you know, with great gratitude to George and Nancy and with immense respect and joy, I give you my friend Ann Lewis. The second thing, as we looked at how we could make a difference, however, is we looked at what Hillary Clinton, now our Secretary of State, was doing to transform American foreign policy. And I do not use that word lightly. It is transformative to build an American policy relating to nations and people around the world that is going to result in a world that is safer, that is more secure, and that because it is based on our values, makes us more than ever proud of our country. And we thought this is a powerful story if people knew about it. We need to get out there and tell that story and talk about those connections why this kind of foreign policy matters, why it is so important to get back to my original question for the future of every child. Children that are here in America today, the children that are growing up or being born in Latin America today, the children that are living in sub-Saharan Africa today, it is so important for all of us that America lead in the ways we can lead and that we support the kind of foreign policy that Hillary is bringing to the State Department and to our country. So how do we do that? That's, again, what No Limits was about. We said we will find ways to encourage people to stay active and engaged, give you lots of information about the issues. Polly Baca was telling me how much she enjoys getting the newsletter, hearing what's going on, because there is so much more going on than sometimes the press is going to be able to tell us. That's step one. Second, we're going to work in coalition with other organizations. We were very proud to work in coalition with the Department of State, the Department of Labor, with the International Labor Rights Coalition, and the American Federation of Teachers on a conference on ending child labor. And the ILO. And the ILO. And good, smart policy. As Hillary says, smart power is good for everybody. Good for <clears throat> us here and there. So again, we started by building a network, thanks to technology, that would enable us to reach people with news and information about the issues that were happening. 
a 21st century human rights agenda. What does that mean? Well, it is one thing when we have a Secretary of State, as we do, and I'm thrilled that we do, who said in Beijing in 1995, women's rights are human rights, and human rights are women's rights. And that statement, which seems so simple, just rocketed around the world. And you can still find it on posters in villages and town halls. It was so important. But now Hillary has made it an operating principle in American foreign policy. We really mean it. You want to build a safer world, invest in women. You want to build strong, stable communities, make it possible for women to support their families. You want to reduce the level of violence want to reduce the number of terrorists, send girls to school. That's right. right. There is a reason why the Taliban burns down schools for girls and murders teachers, because they know that they cannot succeed in their murderous ideology in a society in which women and girls are educated and are full partners. So the first part of it, again, is women, women's rights are human rights. A second element of this new 21st century human rights agenda, very interesting to watch this one develop, is access to the internet as a component of free speech. In the world we live in today, if you were to have freedom to speak, freedom to assemble, freedom again to organize, then being able to have access to new technology is as essential as in the old days a committee of correspondence, if you will. There are reasons why authoritarian governments are trying to shut down technology in their countries and why young people use Twitter and use Facebook and use all the tools that I'm still learning about and they're still inventing, but they use them to spread information among one another and ultimately to take on their governments. Very important. And Hillary has made clear again that for her, this is one of the essential freedoms that we are going to work on. Third, again, to the new 21st century human rights agenda, as Hillary said, it's a comprehensive human rights agenda, and that includes LGBT rights, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender rights. If you're comprehensive, we're talking about everybody. And so it is in our interest. The kind of policies we're talking about ultimately lead to safety and security. Now, I'm not suggesting that we can, if we did enough of this, we would not need a military. We will always need the military. I am saying that if we don't do this, there's no way we ever have a military that is large enough to meet the kinds of threats and dangers that can grow. Here we are, back to no limits. Uh, we think of our role as educators, as advocates, by giving people lots of information. Again, whether the issue is health care here at home, and as you've heard, I feel very strongly about health care and access for health care, or equal pay, or the kinds of, again, common sense investments in jobs and economic opportunity for every family to be able to live with dignity and respect here at home or the smart power policies around the world that are making a difference. We ask you, again, get the information and then join us in being advocates, talking it up, every one of you, because you go to rooms like this, because you, again, of who you are and who your networks are, every one of you can be a really informed and persuasive messenger. So again, we learned in 2008 the real power, the people power, of people who care about issues who care about policy and go out and talk to their friends, their neighbors, their family, their co-workers. Let's keep that up. Let's use those same skills, that same strength, that same passion for making a difference and do it now on behalf of the policies uh, that are going to build us a better world. I a don't believe future. in political turf. I believe in addressing the issues, which is why Anne is a genius. She set up this nonpartisan foundation you know, it's 501c3, every penny is tax deductible. In a year, we've got 35,000 people who read our newsletters and who are called to action. And what we are trying to do is to create a virtual community that can address these issues so when there is a, a measure of critical importance, we can mobilize you. And we can't do that without support. If you can, first, make a contribution. We really would appreciate it, and we could use it, because we are new, we're just beginning, and we, as I say, we would be very, very grateful for your help. Second, be sure to sign up for our mailing list so that you start getting our regular newsletters. I think you'll enjoy them. Help us. Join us as advocates to get that message out. Thank you all very much. Hi everybody, here we are on the plane going home. Denver was a smash. 
and was a hit. We built all these new networks, and I'll see you when we land in D.C. Bye.